All right, so um, today we're diving into physiotherapy. Okay. You challenged us with 150 MCQs. Yeah. And wow, 150. It's like the ultimate test on everything that keeps us moving. Yeah, you could say that again. Uh, These MCQs cover a remarkable range of topics. Okay. It's clear you've been diving deep into the world of muscles and joints and movement. Let's just say my curiosity got the better of me. Oh, okay. But instead of just going question by question, yeah. I was hoping we could use these MCQs as springboards. Right. To really understand the bigger picture of physiotherapy. Okay. What do you say you're up for connecting the dots? I'm all for connecting the dots. Perfect. Let's dive in. Now, a good chunk of these MCQs focus on the mechanics of our musculoskeletal system. Right. Basically, how our bodies are put together and how we move. And how we move. One concept that popped up that I found fascinating was the idea of our bodies acting like levers. Okay. I mean, I know we're not robots, but yeah. tell me more about this. It's a great place to start because it gets at that fundamental relationship between physics and our bodies. Okay. The MCQs highlighted a really cool example. Okay. When you stand on your toes, yeah. your foot actually functions as a second-class lever. Hold on, a second-class lever. Second-class lever. Now you're just using big words to make me feel like I'm back in high school physics. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. But trust me, it's simpler than it sounds. Okay. Picture this. The ball of your foot is the pivot point, or fulcrum. Okay. Your calf muscles, they're the effort mm. of contracting to lift you up. Okay. And the resistance. Yeah. That's your body weight position between the fulcrum and the effort. Okay. That's the hallmark of a second class lever. Okay. It's designed for power, allowing you to lift a significant load. Right. In this case, your entire body with relatively less effort. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And to think I do that every day just to reach that top shelf. There you go. But levers aside. Okay. There was another concept in the MCQs. It tripped me up a bit. The concave convex rule. The concave convex rule. It sounds very technical. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's actually a really elegant principle that helps us understand how our joints move. Okay. You see, most of our joints involve one bone with a rounded surface. Right. That's the convex part. Okay. Fitting into a socket-like shape on another bone, which is the concave part. Mm. Now, the rule simply states that if the concave surface is moving, it moves in the same direction as the bone. Okay. But if the convex surface is moving, it moves in the opposite direction. Okay, I think I'm falling. Okay. But can you give me a real-life example? Absolutely. Otherwise, my brain might lock up. Let's take your knee joint. Okay. When you bend your knee, the tibia, mm -hmm. your shin bone, which has that concave surface, is moving. Right. And it moves in the same direction as your leg is bending. Okay. But when you straighten your leg, the femur, your thigh bone with the convex surface is moving right and it moves in the opposite direction to the overall movement of your leg wow that's actually pretty cool yeah now thinking about movement okay those mcqs also touched on different ways our muscles contract Thank you. and one term that jumped out was isometric contraction isometric contraction no i work out right so i hear a lot of gym jargon yeah but this one was new to me it's a bit of a mouthful yeah but it describes a very specific type of muscle activation where the muscle is generating force but not actually changing length. Wait, so the muscle is working but there's no movement? Right. I'm not sure I get it. Think of it like this. Imagine holding a heavy grocery bag with your arm straight down. Okay. Your muscles are working hard to support the weight, but your arm isn't moving. Right. That's asymmetric contraction in action. Oh. Or think about holding a plank position. Right. Core engaged muscles firing, but no visible movement. Okay. It's a fantastic way to build strength and stability, especially in rehab settings or for people who might have joint limitations. That's actually really interesting. Yeah. I'm going to have to try that at the gym. Right. Now, shifting gears a bit. Okay. There was a whole section in those MCQs dedicated to common injuries. Yes. And honestly, yeah. some of them made me cringe. I bet. Our bodies are incredible, mm -hmm. but they're also vulnerable to a whole range of bumps and twists and strains. Yeah. Right. The MCQs you shared covered a wide spectrum, from fractures to arthritis to muscle and tendon issues. Right, right. Yeah. And speaking of fractures, okay. I was surprised to learn about the green stick fracture. The green stick fracture. I mean, it sounds like something that would happen to a tree branch, not a bone. It does sound a bit odd, right? Yeah. But it's actually quite common in kids. Really? You see, children's bones are still developing. Okay. And they're much more flexible than adult bones. Right. So instead of a clean break, okay. they tend to bend and crack, much like a young green twig. 
Interesting. Hence the name green stick fracture. Okay. Thankfully, these fractures usually heal quite well. Kids are amazing. They are. But let's talk about a condition that affects people of all ages. Arthritis. Okay. The MCQs mention different types. Right. And I have to admit, I always thought arthritis was just, well, arthritis. It's a common misconception. Is it? Arthritis is an umbrella term for a whole group of conditions that affect the joints, causing pain, stiffness, and inflammation. Okay. The MCQs you shared focused on two main types. Okay. Osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Right. Osteoarthritis is the wear and tear kind, mm -hmm. where the cartilage that cushions the joints gradually wears down over time. Oh. This one tends to affect people as they get older. Great. Right. Then you have rheumatoid arthritis, okay. which is an autoimmune disease. Okay. This means the body's immune system mistakenly attacks the lining of the joints. Wow. Leading to pain, swelling, and joint damage. So two very different conditions right. with very different underlying causes. It's very different. It really highlights how important it is to get a proper diagnosis, right? Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. while those MCQs delved into some pretty specific conditions, right. there was a recurring theme that I found particularly interesting. Right. The connection between seemingly isolated issues and the bigger picture of how our bodies function. I noticed that too. This year? It's like everything is connected in ways we don't even realize. It is. And that's something I'd love to explore further. But maybe we should take a quick breather and come back to that in a bit. Sounds like a plan. We've covered a lot of ground already. Yeah. From the mechanics of our joints and muscles to the complexities of conditions like arthritis. Right. But believe me, there's so much more to uncover. Okay. So before we, um, yeah. we were starting to unravel this idea of interconnectedness in the body. Right. How one issue can spiral into others. Yeah. And we've still got a stack of those MCQs to get through. We do. And it's fascinating how they subtly hint at these connections. Okay. For instance, remember that question about the Golgi tendon organ? Right. The Golgi what now? Golgi tendon organ. Refresh my memory on this one. The Golgi tendon organ is a tiny sensor located where your muscles transition into tendons. Okay. Now, when you're lifting weights, for example, this little sensor is monitoring the tension in your muscles. Okay. If that tension gets too high, say you're pushing too hard, Yeah. it sends a rapid fire signal to your spinal cord. And then what does it trigger a siren? It tells your muscle to relax. Okay. It's like an automatic shut off switch, yeah. preventing you from ripping a muscle off the bone. Wow, our bodies are way more sophisticated than I give them credit for. I absolutely are. Right. And this little organ tucked away in our muscles plays a huge role in things like proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Okay. Or PNF. PNF that rings a bell. Right. It involves both contracting and relaxing muscles, right? Exactly. Yeah. By engaging the Golgi tendon organ through that initial muscle contraction, we can actually trick the nervous system into allowing a deeper stretch, improving flexibility and range of motion. Okay. So that's one example of how understanding these seemingly small details right. can actually have big implications for treatment. Absolutely. And speaking of connections, I know we were going to circle back to that idea of how posture plays into all of this. Posture. Because looking at these MCQs, right. there were mentions of conditions like sprinkle shoulder and swan neck deformity. Yeah. Which I'll admit sound a bit like exotic birds. They do, don't they? But, but I assure you, they're very real conditions that can cause significant pain and limitation. Right. And you're right to pick up on the posture connection. Yeah. The MCQs might not shout it from the rooftops, okay. but poor posture is often a major culprit in these kinds of musculoskeletal issues. So explain it to me like I'm one of those little posture-perfect dolls my grandma used to have. Okay. What's the big deal with posture anyway? Well, imagine those dolls perfectly aligned. Right. Now imagine one of them constantly slouching head forward, shoulders rounded. Oh, okay. What happens? Well, they look a little sad for one, right. but I guess their bodies would start to compensate somehow exactly over time our bodies become accustomed to the positions we hold most frequently right so if you're constantly slouching certain muscles in your chest and the front of your neck shorten and tighten okay while the muscles in your upper back and back of your neck weaken and lengthen right that creates an imbalance okay and those imbalances can lead to a whole cascade of problems like the sprinkle shoulder and swan neck things we talked about Precisely those conditions involve specific deformities in the shoulder and hand. Okay. But they often stem from long-standing postural issues okay. that create muscle imbalances and joint restrictions. Right. And it doesn't stop there. 
So it affects other things too. Poor posture can contribute to headaches, back pain, even breathing difficulties. Wow. I have yeah. no idea. It was all connected. Like, it's like a domino effect. It is. And that's something I think a lot of people can relate to, especially now that so many of us spend hours hunched over computers. Absolutely. We're living in a posture pandemic. Yeah, we are. But that's why understanding these connections is so important. Okay. It's not just about treating the symptom, right. whether it's a stiff neck or a painful shoulder. It's about addressing the root cause, hmm. which might be something as seemingly simple as how we hold ourselves throughout the day. Interesting. It's like that old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah. Except in this case, it's about understanding how those seemingly small things, like our posture, yeah. can have huge ripple effects on our overall well-being. Exactly. And what's fascinating is that these MCQs, while focused on specific facts and definitions, right. actually underscore that holistic perspective that's so central to physiotherapy. Okay. It's not just about knowing the names of muscles or bones, right. but understanding how they work together as a system. And how to help that system function at its best. Right. Whether we're recovering from an injury, managing a chronic condition, or just trying to move through the world with more ease and comfort. Couldn't have said it better myself. No. And, you know, going through these MCQs with you yeah. has really highlighted the incredible complexity and resilience of the human body. Okay. It's easy to take our bodies for granted, yeah. but when we really delve into the intricacies of how we move, how we heal, right. it's awe-inspiring. I know, and we've only just scratched the surface here. Right. And I already feel like I need to go back and look at those MCQs with fresh eyes. Oh, it's like a whole new world of understanding has opened up. That's the beauty of knowledge. It often leads to more questions than answers. Right. And in a field like physiotherapy, that's a good thing. It, it keeps us curious. It keeps us exploring. Mm -hmm. It keeps us searching for those aha moments that deepen our understanding and ultimately help us better care for ourselves and others. Absolutely. So to everyone listening, consider this your invitation to keep asking those questions. Right. Keep seeking out those connections and keep marveling at the incredible machine that is the human body. Yeah, absolutely. And hey, if you ever stumble upon more of those challenging MCQs, yeah. you know where to find us. That's right. This has been The Deep Dive, and Ooh, we've yeah. been exploring the intricate and fascinating world of physiotherapy. Yes. Until next time, keep learning, keep moving, and keep those brains engaged. Sounds good.